In this video, we're going to think backwards in terms of what we've been doing. So what we've been doing is we've been given the mean, the standard deviation, and a raw value, and we used that to find the z-score and the probability. Now we're going to be given the probability, and we have to use that to find the z-score and the raw value. So let's take a look at a couple of questions. And again, we're going to focus on to the left and to the right. Um, for the first set of questions, as you can see, the instructions ask us to find a z-score for a certain situation, and the second set of questions ask us to find a value for those same three situations. So instead of doing all three of the first set first, we're actually going to do the a's together, the b's together, the c's together. And here's what we're talking about. If we have, um, let me get a curve here. If I have a, hopefully a better normal curve than that, and I'm looking at z-scores, remember this is a z-score of zero, and then I've got three standard deviations. And then I can do the same with my raw scores. So if I have a mean of 52, and a standard deviation of 3, well then I can say that's 55, 58, 61, to the left would be 49, sorry for the bad, bad handwriting, um, 46, 43. So it's important that we understand that these are the same exact thing, except that one is using a different numbering system, the standard numbering system and the other is its own normal model. So the reason I bring that up is because as we're working here, we're going to be doing the same thing except using a different mean and standard deviation. So for A, it says let's find a z-score if the area to the left of the value is 0.239. So what we're saying is we've got some value where I'm gonna change colors again where if I shaded all of this in, this area is 0.239. The area to the left is 0.239. So lucky for us, yes, we could use a normal table, but it's just way more complicated. So let's just use norm S inverse and then put 0.239. Now, what does the S mean? S means standard, so that means it's going to return a z-score. What does inverse mean? It means I'm giving you the area, you give me the z-score. And so the z-score is point, negative 0 0.7095. Now, that means this line is at negative 0 0.7095. That is the z-score. Now, the question, the second set of questions for A says what's the actual value. So we know it's somewhere between 49 and 52. So what do you think it's going to be? Maybe close to 50? So how do we know? Well, instead of norm S inverse, it's just norm inverse. We still use 0.239, but now we're going to enter the mean of 52 and the standard deviation of three. And so 49.871, which is pretty close to 50, which was my guess. Now, would I have to use this function? No, I could use my z-score formula and say negative 0 0.7095 is equal to x minus 52 divided by 3, and I could do the math, or I could just save myself a buttload of time and use norm inverse. So that's what I'm going to do. Now for B, uh, I'm going to change colors yet again. I'm too lazy to erase my curve, but what this one's saying is 80th percentile, which means the area to the left is 80% of the values. So I'm going to guess it's somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in here. So we're saying the area shaded in green is 80% or 0.8. So what does that mean? Exactly what I did before equals norm S inverse 
which is 0.8416. So it means I did a really poor job of estimating. So it's less than one standard deviation. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Norm inverse probability is 0.8. Mean is 52. Standard deviation is 3. And that's 54.525. So again, that would be just in line with what we'd expect. Now, what about if I'm going to the right? Well, the same way that we talked about 1 minus is exactly what we're going to do now. Remember when we were finding area, if we were going to the left, we use norm dist, and if we were going to the right, we use 1 minus norm dist. And we're going to think about that same process. So if the area to the right is 0.963, I can't even, I can't even have it on this picture because there's way too many scribbles going on. So the area to the right is 0.963. That's a lot. That's almost all of 100%, right? So it's going to be somewhere over here. So what I think is the best way to do this is to do norm S inverse, and I'm just going to do 1 minus 0.963. Now why is that going to help? Because I want essentially the z-score for whatever this very small value is. And what's that very small value? 1 minus 0.963. And I can do the same thing here. And again, that gives me a z-score of negative 1.786. So again, I did a really poor job of estimating um, somewhere in here. So all of this is the 90%. And then this part is the 1 minus 0.963. I would do the same thing here. Equals norm inverse. Did I use dist? Oh, good. Thought for a minute I screwed up. Norm inverse. Probability, again, 1 minus 0 0.963. Whoops. The mean is 52. The standard deviation is 3. And now that's 46.4. And again, that makes perfect sense. Now let's take a look at questions where we're given the area either between two z-scores or in the tails. And again, we're still trying to find the z-score or trying to find the value. Um, but for this, the most important thing to understand is that the entire area Whoops, I need to select a color there. The entire area is equal to 1. We're going to use that a lot. So for instance, for the first question, they're saying we have a negative z and a positive z, which basically means it's the same value opposite sign. And the area between those is 90%, which is the same as the 0.9 that they told us. So why do I bring up the fact that the entire area is 1? Well, if the entire area is 1 and the area in the middle is 0.9, 1 minus 0.9 is 0.1. And that means if I add up both of these shaded green tails, that should equal 0.1. Well, those shaded green tails are the exact same. So if I take 0.1 and divide it in half, I get 0 0.05, which means there's 0 0.05 in this tail. Now there's also 0 0.05 in this tail. But remember, when I'm finding area, let's go ahead and do the one to the left, and then we'll get into the one that's more complicated. The left z-score is going to be exactly what we just did in our last questions, norm s inverse, and then 0 0.05. So negative 1.649 is this z-score. Negative 1.6449. Now, I know that the negative z and the positive z are the same value, opposite signs. So if I wanted to, I could just say that this is equal to negative norm s inverse of 
1.05. And I'm going to get the correct answer, which is the positive value, 1.6449. Now, obviously, me being a math nerd, I'm not satisfied with that. I like to plug in the exact value. So if this is 0 0.05 to the left of this value, and this is 0.9, then to the left of this z-score is 0 0.05 plus 0 0.9. So this is 0.95. So now if I use equals norm s inverse of 0.95, notice I'm going to get the positive value. Now, is it going to matter? No. Either way, you're going to get the correct answer. My hope is that you understand at least one of those ways. Now, same as we did before, if I'm looking for the value, I'm doing the exact same thing as I did, but instead of norm S inverse, it's norm inverse. I'm still using 0 0.05. The mean is 52. The standard deviation is 3. And now for this one, this is where you need to understand, because if I tried to use negative norm S, norm inverse, I would just end up with negative 47, which is not correct. So this is where I need to make sure I understand the norm inverse, and this was 0.95, because that's the area to the left of that value, comma 52, comma 3. So again, before we move on, what does that mean? That means that 90% of our values are between 47.065 and 56.935. Or 90% of our values are between the z-scores of negative 1.645 and positive 1.645. Now, let's look at the same thing now with tails. And it's going to feel very similar. So if I have the area in the tails is 0 0.2, I'm going to erase these numbers because now they're wrong. If the entire area is 1, the area in the tails is 0 0.2, just like before, the tails are the same. So that means now there's 0 0.1 in each of the tails, which means this guy is 0 0.1, and this guy is 0.9 because if I took 1 minus 0.2 that would give me 0.8 which means the area in the middle is 0.8 there's 0.1 to the left of this and this is 0.1 plus 0.8 which is 0.9 so hopefully that made sense the way that I did that again the entire area is 1 if there's 0.1 here, then there's 1 minus 0.1 to the left of it, which is 0.9. So again, just as I did before, the left z is going to be norm s inverse. The probability is the smaller one, 0.1. And then again, this is just going to be the positive, norm s inverse 0.9. Notice they're the same value. And then if I'm actually finding the values, I could take this and do the z-score formula and solve for x, but I'm too lazy to do that. So I just use norm inverse probability of 0.1, mean of 52, standard deviation of 3. And again, the right value probability oops, equals norm inverse probability is 0.9 mean is 52, standard deviation is 3. So again, the area in the tails is 0.2, which means there's 80% in the middle. So 80% of our values fall between 48.155 and 55.845. Here are two practice for you to try on your own. So press pause, try these two questions. Um, use Excel, please. And when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So for the first question, we have that the body temperatures of adults are normally distributed. Um, we're looking for the temperature that represents the 90th percentile. Remember, the 90th percentile means 90% is to the left of that value. So I'm going to use norm S inverse 
uh, sorry, not norm S, just norm inverse. Norm S inverse would give me the z-score, but norm inverse is going to give me the actual value. And so I'm going to enter the probability, and that's 90th percentile, so 0.9 to the left. The mean is 98.6, and the standard deviation is 0.73. So what temperature represents the 90th percentile? 99.536 degrees. For two, let's assume the lengths of newborn full-term babies in the U.S. are normally distributed with a mean length of 20 inches and a standard deviation of 1.2 inches. What's the minimum length that a baby could be and still have a length that is amongst the top 25% of baby lengths? So again, what we're looking at is that the entire curve is 100%. And if the entire curve is 100%, and we're looking at the top 25%, that means to the left is 75%. So that's the only math I have to do there. I'm going to use norm inverse of 0.75 because we need to tell Excel how much is to the left. And then the mean is 20, the standard deviation is 1.2, and so a baby that is 20.809 inches would be amongst the top 25%, so that height or greater. Coming up next, we're going to explore the conditions in which we can approximate a binomial distribution with a normal distribution.